That speed, it's totally insane. Four to six weeks for launch readiness is completely possible. Yesterday, SpaceX rolled the central steel plate for the OLM water deluge into position. The installation process proceeded remarkably smoothly, taking only about four hours to complete. It was a testament to the bold engineering techniques employed by SpaceX, venturing into uncharted territories of innovation and design. First, the Grover or GMK 7550 counterweight carrying SPMT and the vertical transport stand for the water-cooled steel plate were carefully maneuvered closer to the orbital launch mount. The pancake-like structure was then positioned onto the movement jig, ensuring a precise alignment before its placement under the OLM. This step required some additional time to achieve a perfect fit. In an impressive display of ingenuity, SpaceX utilized a large jig to transport the transpirationally cooled steel sandwich, which forms the sensor section nearly vertical under the Starship OLM. This remarkable feat was accomplished with the aid of an SPMT creating a seamless integration. Subsequently, a crane was employed to delicately lift the steel plate out of the jig, gradually lowering it to the ground. The expertise of the engineers was evident in their mastery of complex lifts and meticulous installation procedures. The final result was a flawless fit, evoking anticipation for the forthcoming outcomes of this endeavor. According to Ryan Hansen Space, the plate's thickness measures approximately 2,000 2307 pixels, which when converted using a specific formula corresponds to approximately 386 millimeters or 15.19 inches. To account for any potential inaccuracies, rounding up to 15.2 inches seems reasonable. Notably, since the usage of Imperial units is prevalent in GSE-related matters, this rounded figure aligns conveniently with the established system. With each step of the installation process executed with precision and expertise, the stage is set for further progress. The the culmination of meticulous planning and technical acumen promises exciting developments in the near future. SpaceX still has a two-hour closure today to conduct transportation operations, this time from 9pm to 11pm. This should move other plates and manifolds waiting to come to the launch site. The really impressive part is when they screw the shower head on, and this is the latest high-pressure pipe work for the water-cooled plates. Burst discs have been added to both lines to protect from overpressure. Thanks to Chrome Kiwi for this amazing render. At the building site, Ship 28 just got a Pez dispenser door. If possible, this will be Starship's first prototype to send cargo into orbit. Note that it was also the first ship to be stacked with a new method. Instead of first stacking two halves of the ship, which are then stacked together, they stacked it top to down. This way, the crane can rest attached to the nose cone during the whole process. Furthermore, welding robots will only need to work on the ground and not high up in the air. SpaceX still targets August for the next Starship launch. The company has recently received a permit from the Federal Communications Commission for operation as soon as July 14th to January 14th of 2024. According to the FCC application, the mission will involve the launch of the entire Starship vehicle, including the Super Heavy booster and Starship upper stage. The mission which would launch from Boca Chica in Texas involves the super heavy booster flying back to the Gulf of Mexico touching down 495 seconds after liftoff. The Starship's upper stage will achieve orbit before landing in the Pacific Ocean northwest of the Hawaiian island of Kauai around 90 minutes after launch. However, SpaceX must obtain a license from the Federal Aviation Administration's Office of Commercial Space Transportation before the launch can take place. Rocket Lab, meanwhile, just announced its next launch, which will attempt its first stage recovery. The company is expected to launch seven satellites from Launch Complex 1 on the Mahia Peninsula in New Zealand. This will be the 39th overall mission and the 7th of the year. The mission named Baby Come Back will launch no earlier than July 14th. NASA will fly four CubeSats dubbed the Starling mission and will test technologies for future multiple spacecraft missions. Spire has two 3U CubeSats on board which will carry Global Navigation Satellite System Radio Occultation, or GNSSRO payloads. These two satellites will be used to replenish the fully deployed constellation of more than 100 multi-purpose satellites. The final satellite payload on this mission is the Telesat LEO-3 demonstration 
Administration satellite. Rocket Lab will also attempt to recover the first stage of the mission, hence the name Baby Come Back. This will be the second recovery attempt of the year after previously successfully recovering the first stage during their 35th mission, The Beat Goes On. I'm sensing a pattern here. Following stage separation, the Electron first stage will use reaction control thrusters to orient itself as it travels back through the dense atmosphere. Unlike the Falcon 9, the Electron does not perform an entry burn or landing burn. Instead, the RCS thrusters make sure the first stage is positioned to best handle the heating and pressures applied and then, at the correct altitude, will deploy a parachute before an eventual soft touchdown in the ocean, where it will be recovered by ship. Rocket Lab is currently second only to SpaceX in the number of launches in 2023. And finally, after 27 years of service, Europe's venerable heavy lifter has rocketed into retirement. The powerful Ariane 5 launched yesterday on July 5th on the last ever mission of its storied career, which began way back in 96 and now includes 117 orbital liftoffs. The mission began at 6 p.m. EDT when the Ariane 5 launched from Europe's spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. About two and a half minutes into the flight, the vehicle's 31.6 meter solid rocket boosters separated from the core stage, whose lone engine continued burning, carrying the mission's two satellites skyward. The core stage shut down around nine minutes after liftoff, and the upper stage separated and began its own burn. Approximately 30 minutes into the flight, the first satellite, called Heinrich Hertz, was released into geostationary transfer orbit high above Earth. About three minutes later, the second payload, known as Syracuse 4B, followed suit. Ariane 5 has perfectly finished its work. Stefan Israel, CEO of Ariane Space, the France-based company that operated the rocket, said on today's launch webcast shortly after the second deployment. It's really now a legendary launcher. This flight ended a nearly 30-year operational career for the Ariane 5, which outlaunched the four other Ariane rockets rockets that came before it. Ariane 5 leaves behind an incredible legacy of technical prowess and reliability. During its operational lifetime, Ariane 5 has been a major asset for Europe to ensure its autonomous access to space. Spokesperson for the European Space Agency, or ESA, said, Ariane 5 first launched in 1996 but failed to reach orbit on that debut, initiating an auto-destruct abort mid-flight. After that initial failure, the rocket became one of the world's most most reliable launchers. Of Ariane 5's 117 missions and 239 payloads delivered to orbit, the launch vehicle has performed at a 96% success rate, according to ESA. Development of the Ariane 5's successor, the Ariane 6, has been proceeding for, for more than a decade. Ariane 6 is a new launcher system which will be more flexible, cost-efficient, and serve more types of launches compared to Ariane 5, said an ESA representative. Europe's new rocket will be designed to fly in two configurations, A62 and A64, which will carry two and four solid rocket boosters, respectively. The new heavy lifter was originally expected to debut in 2020, but setbacks have repeatedly pushed that target down the calendar. Ariane 6 is now expected to launch no earlier than late 2023 leaving Europe with a gap of launch options until it's ready. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing goings-on in the world of space exploration. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the Patreon link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.